Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Outdoor Buzz. Uh, this is uh, Adventures in Beekeeping actually. Uh, this is my first winter with my uh, bees and uh, can't wait for spring to start so we can get going again on it. Uh, I think I lost a couple of hives uh, actually early last fall. Um, it uh, something happened it got warm for a spell while I was gone and I think I got robbed out by wasps uh, yellow jackets as it were uh, so I'm gonna have to kind of repopulate a couple of hives I'm gonna guess this spring so I'm gonna have to order a couple nukes maybe a package but uh, you know it gets rather expensive to do that and uh, it's like a hundred, you know, hundred and thirty-five dollars for a package plus shipping. Um, nukes are a hundred and fifty dollars. Um, you know, you do that for three. That's four hundred and fifty bucks. I don't do this for a living, so I'm not in it to make money. And that gets kind of expensive if you got to do it every year. So my, I started looking at ways to have that not happen to me for next year. Um, and one of the ways uh, after my research uh, was to try to create nucleus colonies uh, of my own bees, my own uh, make my own queens, uh, so that I can overwinter these nukes and have bees, not production bees that are going to make my honey, but bees just to repopulate in the, in the next spring. So I'll have several nukes going, and uh, even if half of them die, I'll still have a couple uh, or three. Uh, nucleus colonies that I can repopulate my my uh, any hives that I have ten frame hives that are that are honey producers for me um, early in the spring and I can get going and it's not going to cost me any money so so the two two systems that I looked at one was a double nuke and that consists of a ten frame bottom box with a divider in the middle so you have essentially two four frame uh, nukes but they're combined and then you have uh, two four frame boxes on top of that that can that are removable and uh, what you do with those four frames is you have a honey 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 against the interior wall uh, on both the lower and the upper and and then you can put honey and pollen on the outside and then and then those are just empty frames or whatever in the in the in the winter uh, as it as it goes out, and the the theory is is that uh, the bees on this side and the bees on this side will share that wall because they're next to the food source, and heat rises. And this this package or this nucleus of bees will be on this side of the wall. This nucleus will be on this side of the wall, and they'll basically share that inner wall, which is away from obviously the outer walls, which gets very very cold here in Wisconsin, which is where I'm at, central Wisconsin. Uh, and they can keep kind of each other warm uh, without touching each other. I guess you can say they share that common wall and they'll go up as they, you know, use up their stores for the winter. That's the theory behind it. It seemed, uh, from what I've been reading, guys have had great success with that, especially in the northern climates doing it. So that's what I'm going to try. Uh, another aspect of that is... Um, growing my own queens in uh, mini mating nukes uh, and that's what I'm going to do I'm going to be splitting out some nukes early in the spring hopefully after I get them and creating nucleus colonies very very small ones uh, that are mating nukes uh, virgin queens that virgin queen will go out get mated come back and I can use those mated queens if uh, one of my uh, or one or two or three of my colonies that I have, my 10 frame hives, uh, have queens that uh, either swarmed and took off or uh, the queen isn't producing very well. She can be replaced very, very quickly by me for essentially no cost whatsoever. Uh, and one of, one of the videos that I was looking at was by uh, Dave from Barnyard Bees uh, down in uh, Georgia. And uh, if you ever you know get a chance to uh, to check out his YouTube channel he's got some great videos on how he is setting up his commercial operation that's what his eventuality is I guess 
uh, but he has some great advice, great things, uh, and he shares all that information with everybody so that you can do it yourself if you so choose. And um, he's got a nice cut list and everything, and and uh, I I was having difficulty trying to, you know, he was holding his camera with one hand, and I was trying to see how he was doing it. He, he provided a cut list, but I was trying to see how everything fit, fit together. And uh, so this video essentially is just taking his uh, mini nukes and building it myself and it's a video of me building his nuke. This is not my idea. I don't even know if this is going to work but essentially what it is is it's a mini nuke, two frame nuke uh, and it will hold one deep frame or two, two deep frames I should say um, instead of the, the mini nukes that you're used to which are the frames are half wide uh, and the theory behind that is is that he can take a frame out of one of his colonies somewhere and interchange them very very quickly with the mini mini nukes you can't do that you can't use them for anything but the mini mating nukes that's it so this is a, a mini mating nuke but it's a, for a full frame deep frame uh, and so I just wanted to go over yesterday I was out here freezing cold it was uh, it was zero degrees. It's kind of cold out here today too. It was about 13 below last night. It's warmed up to about four below I think now, but I got the garage half closed. Sorry for the mess. My boat is in here and there's very limited room. My, all my bee stuff is stored in here and it's just a complete mess. So I have very, very limited space to work with, but you work with what you got. Uh, so anyways, I wanted to go over his cut list, which again is on one of his videos. Uh, he's got it, and I'll provide this cut list from from him on this video in the in the in the video notes. But essentially, what we have is, uh, and and I'll just I'll just say this right off the bat. He uses what uh, he called or it's called a Mantec flooring. Uh, it's almost like OSB wafer board. Uh, he buys it in four by eight sheets and then cuts it down and uh, into the sizes that he needs and, and I did the calculations and uh, he could probably get four or five of these mini hives out of a four by eight sheet I'm gonna guess uh, I it was about 35 bucks for a four by eight sheet uh, from when I priced it out however there is nobody within 50 miles here that that has that uh, that type of material here so I looked at just normal 1 by 12 pine clear pine uh, and I went to Menards and uh, oh, 8 foot 1 by 12 was roughly $10 so this and it will make one nuke so that's $10 so I can make four nukes out of 40 bucks you could probably make five out of his 35 for the Advantech difference being uh, you know that's a that engineered product uh, it does well in in um, in moisture climate this probably will do better in moisture climate I'm gonna guess since this is solid wood there's no resins to worry about delaminating or anything like that so I just went with with what I had around here you can go with the Advantech uh, uh, flooring uh, which is which is uh, and, and I'm gonna assume that he uses three quarters of an inch uh, this is one by twelve but it's nominal width is three quarters of an inch so keep that in mind because that's important when you're cutting stuff if you use half inch that's going to change your dimensions of what, what we're talking about here so you're going to have to adjust it accordingly um, so my one my one buys here and his three quarter flooring is essentially very very close to the same uh, uh, depth so I don't have I didn't have to change any of the dimensions uh, and I just wanted to go over the cut list here with you uh, right Right away for the sides, the two sides of the uh, mini nuke are ten and a quarter inches wide by nineteen and three quarter inches long, and there's two of them. Okay, so again, I'll put this uh, cut list on this video just so you know. Um, bottom board, which is here, is uh, twenty-one inches long and four and three quarter inches wide. And then we have the backboard, which will sit here, which is nine and a half inches high, 
and it is three and a quarter inches wide across. Uh, and uh, so again, like you, you, you notice, it's very, very narrow, but it's, it'll fit two frames inside there. And uh, I'll show you how this essentially works. Um, because this is obviously nine and a half, this is ten and a quarter, and the frames actually will rest on this. And then these little pieces will actually uh, close up the box like that, like so. And that's how that will work. Um, so anyways, these two pieces are your are your front and back. Uh, they are, let's see here, yeah, two inches wide by four and three quarters, because that's your, that's going to be your, your width of your bottom board or your top board to four and three quarters, four and three quarters. And then uh, I forgot the front is going to be, this one was nine and a half. This one in the front is eight and five eighths. And I'm going to assume he didn't really specify, but uh, the reason for the dis difference in height, this is going to be a little difficult to do. I'm going to have to measure uh, because we're going to have a space down the bottom because that's going to be the B entrance. And then this is also going to be the ledge. So uh, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. And then, of course, your top board, he's got that uh, the migratory top is 24 by 5 and a half uh, total. I'm going to assume that it overhangs a bit on either side. That's why he, he has it like that. I can't answer that, to be honest. Uh, this will also uh, serve as the top board when we put a feeder on here. And this system also, when you build one of these mini nukes, you're going to need to build a feeder for each one, a top feeder. And uh, I will, in this video, later in this video, I'm going to cut up uh, one and put one together, uh, just like he did. Um, Again, his his uh, his videos didn't really give dimensions and things like that, and so we're gonna see how that works and see if we can make something that works. So, uh, without further ado, we're going to uh, start with the uh, putting this thing together. Uh, just so you know, I've got uh, staples here, inch and an eighth. Uh, this is three quarter inch, so that puts you us in there at oh. Let's see, a quarter, three-eighths of an inch uh, bite into the next one, which is not a ton, but should be enough to get us where we need to be. Uh, inch and a half would probably be a little bit better. Uh, it would give you uh, three-quarters inch of bite into the wood. Uh, but um, inch and an eighth will work just fine. And I better hook this up. While we... Okay. Our uh, compressor has been uh, got up to uh, up to temp, or I mean up to uh, pressure, so we won't have that noise. I wanted to wait until that turned off so I can talk on the on the video a little bit better. But let's get started here. Uh, here's a tip: this is uh, Gorilla wood glue, and this is good for outdoor and indoor. Don't get just the indoor one because obviously this is going to be sitting outdoor. And here's another tip of don't leave this out in a garage that gets below zero because even if you thaw it out, it will become pure rubber afterwards. So we're going to glue these together and uh, that's that. So essentially what we want to do is staple these on here so we'll go We'll, uh, yeah, what we'll do is put this, and then we'll, we'll staple it from the bottom just like that to get it nice and flush. All right, so we'll take some wood glue. Take our brush, brush it in. It doesn't have to be a super thin amount, but you don't want it to dry before you start stapling. Otherwise, the 
it's really doing you no good. So you want it flush on the back end here. And then uh, get the tape on here. My cord is a little uh, not very limber, so we're going to... And I'm not the world's best carpenter, so hopefully it doesn't, uh, okay. Now back to it. Okay, so it was too cold out here for my compressor, so I had to warm it up a bit. And then my battery on my GoPro went down, so we got to change that out. This isn't going as as expected, but uh, we'll continue on here. frozen now my brush and dried up since the last time all right so that's that all right so we will uh, is going to go. So we're going to uh probably not a good idea to have a uh, compressor uh hose that
is the only thing that is going to cause me a little headache here. I'm just trying. Okay, let's see here. Now this is the eight and a half inch piece, and uh, it sits there, and I'm not exactly sure, but I'm gonna guess, I'm just gonna use that for a spacer, and I'm gonna guess that that is probably the same height. Let's see this. Let's see if I can measure this a little bit better. about three quarters there. I am at three quarters there. So that's going to be good. I'm going to call it good. Okay, so let's put a little glue on this. And a little glue on this. This is the piece that's eight and five eighths. <laughs> Okay. here and a little glue there all right
Okay, this is the mini nuke mating box. And uh, well, here's the, I'm going to have to do something about the, the top here because it's going to need some board that goes down. But uh, that's the top for it. I'm going to need to put a uh, little piece here. Probably that uh, they're going to actually fit in here. Sort of like that, I would guess, or something like, well, that's exactly like that, right there. That's how that's going to fit, so that it, it will fit right over. Uh, it'll fit right over there. So, anyways, that, as they say, is that. Now, I guess the most, the moment of truth will come when I take a look and see what a uh, how a frame will fit. Right? Oh. So that's it. Frame will fit here. The frame will fit here. If it's a little loose, I would have probably you know it's a little loose, but I'll tell you, when you're dealing with something this small, there's not a lot of room to work in here, so it's good that you have a little bit of play side to side, not going to fall down or anything, but uh, as you can see, hope you can see that, these fit pretty well ideal for a two frame nuke right in there, so that's it in a nutshell, so I hope you can see how that uh, how those back and front boards become a ledge to sit on. That was the most confusing part when I was trying to watch the videos and determine how this was put together. Uh, I didn't quite get that this doubled as a handle and closed the box up and allowed for that for the ledge. So that's good. And then here's your, your B entry right here. You can put a little bit of hardware cloth on there and close that up. So so that uh, you know they only have you know uh, an inch or so to go in and out if you so choose. And my next one, I think I'm going to build. I'm going to uh, I think I'm going to go all the way down, and uh, I'm going to drill a hole in there. But uh, my next project will actually be. And this is funny. This is a. Uh, built-out comb on one side only and uh, it's kind of funny that it only has one side built out but that'll work nice for this mini for a mini nuke actually it'll allow them to, to uh, build out comb and utilize the existing and then uh, this probably won't go in there this is just just for demonstration only this was, came from a nuke, and as you can tell, they they really give you the oldest oldest frames that they can to, when they when they sell you a nuke. So that's it in a nutshell. Thanks to uh, David Barnyard Bees for giving me the idea. Uh, the total cost for this nuke right here with the top is ten bucks. That's what this one by twelve costs, ten dollars. So. That's a hell of a deal. Um, it's very inexpensive for creating your own queens. A new queen itself will cost uh, you know, thirty-five dollars plus whatever shipping they're going to charge you. And uh, if I can grow my own, all the better. I'm going to create about four of these, and uh, I'm also going to do the feeders. So uh, stay tuned, um, and uh, we'll do a uh, a feeder cut as well um, to put on top of this so hang tight <laughs>